Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and I'm bringing you another one of these gun videos. This is probably the last one I'll do with just ammunition, because uh, it's time to make things go bang, <laughs> and, and that'll be a good time. But I thought I'd show you some different calibers compared to some real life stuff that, that maybe you've seen, like on the left there's a quarter, on the right is my iPhone and it's uh, Brass Monkey <laughs> iPhone cover. So anyway, here are a couple of uh, pieces of ammo here. This is the 380 ACP. This is actually like my, my carry round that, that I have with me most of the time anyway. And uh, this is a nine millimeter. This nine millimeter, I think is the NATO standard for pistols. So you see a lot of guys, especially like your Europeans carry this on their side and what's funny is in gun world a lot of people think that the 380 is probably too weak you know, to, to stop a man but the 9mm is fine and if you look at them they're actually you know, pretty similar rounds but uh, the 9mm is more powerful just not a ton more powerful. This is the 223. This is what's fired out of most American assault rifles it, it has another like twin the, the 556 which is what we actually shoot but um, but they're virtually the same you can shoot this out of your, your AR-15 your M16 uh, some of the scars stuff like that I think the ACR might shoot this too I'm not positive about that though so I, I could get it wrong but um, this is the the standard for the NATO armies that that you see all the time this is a 762 this is actually the Mosin Nagant round but I grabbed it because it's really similar to what an AK-47 shoots and you can kind of see you know, the difference between these two things, especially the difference in the bullet, right? So, you know, this is the casing. I'm going to show you more because you can get the idea that there's, there's more to the round than there really is. And this is a 50 cal. This is what comes out of the Barrett, and then the, it's kind of a big boy. Um, a lot of gun people, especially like target gun people, and um, I don't know, it, a lot of gun people think that bigger's better, right? They're all about bigger, bigger, bigger. They just love that, and, and that's their thing. But um, when the military chose this, to be their round, they used to shoot something closer to this. And what they found was that, and I think I mentioned this in another video, so I'll go fast. What they found is that because people can carry so many more of these, that it takes, you know, that because people have more rounds, like seven people can be as effective as 12. And, and that was a line of thinking between, by choosing a smaller one like this. So uh, interesting stuff. I don't know. I fall in the camp that says it has a lot more to do with where you shoot the guy. You know, you, if you get like a lung, a shot, a heart, or a head shot, then any of these rounds will do the trick. If you shoot them in the arm, then none of these rounds really do the trick. You know, even a 50 cal doesn't you know, instantly kill a guy if you hit him in the forearm. It's just not a deadly wound. It's, it's terrible, but it's not a deadly wound. The 50 cal, I'm told, was originally designed to shoot, like, you know, to take out um, like mechanized stuff, like you know, a Hummer or a Jeep or things like that. You shoot it in the radiator, you shoot it in the engine, and it stops running, and, and that's its deal. Now it's become a choice of snipers a lot. They like this thing. And snipers aren't the sort of people who need to fire, typically, you know, 300 rounds or 600 rounds in an engagement. And so for them, carrying a great big round isn't a, isn't a big problem. Whereas if you're like a regular infantryman, you, know, you might be carrying hundreds of rounds on your chest in like a vest. And the difference between this and this can be how quickly you run out of ammo. So those are the thought processes that go into why different armies choose what they choose. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll let people who've actually fought in war, you know, make that decision. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was the hollow point. So this is a nine millimeter and it's called, uh, I think it's a full metal jacket, right? And what that means is that the, the thing is completely coated. This is a hollow point and you can see the difference there. When this hits its target, it tends to stay together and penetrate really deeply. When this hits its target, it tends to expand out and become shaped a lot like a mushroom. And uh, because of that, uh, this thing, it doesn't always go as deep. And in gun circles, that's a good thing. And it's funny, in New Jersey, when I went up there, these things are illegal. And they consider them cop killers and to be a really horrible thing. In North Carolina, these are legal. And they're considered almost like polite and courteous to carry because they don't go through the bad guy and into something else. You know, in North Carolina, they, they view this hollow point because it expands, does its damage right on the spot and not to the, to the thing behind it. They consider this like the responsible round to carry, whereas in New Jersey, they consider it to be a, a cop killer. So, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. There's one other thing I wanted to do, which was take this guy apart for you. So I will do my best to set this up. I bought this tool 
designed to take apart ammo. This is a little bit loud. Let's hope this works. Got it. Son of a gun. I practiced this and it went smoother in practice. So this is the bullet itself and the rest of it was all for holding gun power and launching the thing out. So as I mentioned in the shotgun, this is the primer. You tap on that guy and it makes a small little spark. You hit this guy and you know it creates these gases that expand or some might say explosion <laughs> that, uh, that, that shoots the bullet out the top and away it goes. So, uh, so this is actually you know, the, the primary tool of uh, you know, the United States and European armies. This little guy right there. And, uh, and, and that's it. So let's get on to the gameplay. So this is a little bit of SCAR gameplay and it's sabotage. So uh, I picked the SCAR actually for this video. I was like, I gotta find a weapon that shoots the 223. And I looked into it and I had my friend Kyle help me look into it. And as best we can tell, the SCAR in this game shoots the 223 ammo, the one that I took apart. The, um, there are two variations of the SCAR and the other one shoots a, a bigger round, but it looks like the Modern Warfare 3 one shoots that round that I, that I took apart. Uh, I like to play lots of different game types. It, it, well, it does a couple things, right? For me as a YouTube commentator, it gives me different length videos. And this is, you know, I guess inside YouTube here, but it gives me different length videos so that depending on the topic I have, I have, you know, video games that fit them. Oh my gosh, I just hate watching videos where you can tell that the commentator is sitting there staring at the virtual clock, you know, waiting for the game to and because he ran out of things to say. So my, my counter to that is not just play TDM, not just play Domination, you know, play Domination for the long ones like Mail Monday, play Sabo for the short ones like this. So yeah. Um, the other thing about playing lots of different game types, and this applies to everyone, not just YouTubers, is that it keeps stuff fresh for me, right? Playing some Demo, playing some Sabo, playing some Dom, playing some TDM, Kill Confirmed, etc. Uh, by playing lots of different game modes, even you know if they're not all your very favorite, it keeps the game a little fresher. And and I like that, because I, <laughs> I play a lot of Call of Duty, and I play it for a long time, so, so that's the way I go. Um, some guys have been talking about the FMG9s being cheap. And uh, I guess they're a little powerful, especially if you're up close to them. I find them to be not that powerful at a distance, but maybe in your hands they do better. But uh, last year, I took all this heat for using the FAMAS. And I think this year I'm doing a kind of, you know what, bite me. It's my favorite secondary. I'm going to use it. I, it. I rarely get more than like one kill a game with it. It's not like I'm running them and going scavenger all the time. And I don't think I got any kills with it this game. So chill, chill. Sabo as a game type is a lot like, you know, every other objective-based game type. And that the, the, the goal is to sort of drive into their spawn and get map control, right? That, that's your objective. That's what you're trying to do. If, uh, you know, if you can get these guys not spawning right next to the bomb, right next to the bomb, which is, you know, what happens when you get your team surrounding the bomb, they start spawning like mid-map, then, uh, then you're in a good spot. Then they start coming to you. So, uh, so yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a pretty happy place right here. It looks like I do get a couple kills with this FNG9. I think I ran out of scar ammo. But, uh, yeah, now I think I'm out of ammo completely, which is, which is a problem. But I do have uh, a Predator in my pocket, and I can use that to defend the bomb and lock in the win. Uh, a lot of these game types, obviously, they... Uh, you know, if you have a Predator, if you have a airstrike in your pocket and you're just waiting for this bomb to finish off, then it's really powerful, right? You can be that guy that uh, that sits there and locks down the bomb from a distance to, to do your thing. So uh, pretty good gameplay, I think, for me. You know, I did get the, the last guy tried to defuse the bomb with the bomb itself, and I cleared it out with the Predator and, and whatever, 13 and 2... Uh, I'm, I'm proud of this game. It went just like I hoped it would. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys like this mix of sort of in real life and video game stuff, and have a good day. If you're new around here and you enjoyed the video, you can click on subscribe in the top right to see more stuff from me. Two recent videos that you may have missed if you're not new around here. Uh, one good, one bad. The top one is my story time quick tip. I, I give a, a quick tip for the map resistance and I also sort of wrap it with a story on, on what happened in the game and you get to see me use it and stuff like that. The bottom one is the bad video. It's about a, a patch update that didn't really have a lot of new stuff in it, but people ask me about what's in all the patches and playlist updates, so I do my best to keep you informed. Surprise video on the right and uh, links in the description to t-shirts, Facebook, Twitter, and that iPhone case that, uh, that I had in there if, uh, if you're interested in that. It's one of those OtterBox things. It's really good. So uh, have a good day, and I'll catch you later.